In the studio is Big Tony. Good morning. Good morning, Tom. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good, from Magna Carta. And with him, Kun Pira. How are you? I'm very well indeed. Now, Kun Pira, you're a qualified barrister, aren't you? I am. And you started off as the coffee boy uh, at Magna Carta. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you have been at Magna Carta for, what, 16 years, you were saying? Around 16 on, yeah? years, yes. Wow, you yes. Must be, how old were you when you started? 20, no, 30, no. It was 2007. Really? 2007. So If you'd have killed somebody, you would have to serve less time, you know that, <laughs> with, with good behaviour. Kun Pira, we got you in today because uh, we enjoy having guests now. COVID is over, and we've got a lot of questions for you that have been sent in for our listeners. Okay. It's all very well asking Tony, but now we've got a barrister in the studio. Happy to be here. Good. So I'm going to start you off with a couple of questions, then we'll have some music and come back with some more. Okay. If I, oh, by the way, if these questions are too difficult for you and you need to have a pause while you check it, you can always say, I'll come back to you there afterwards. Just <laughs> I'll so try you, my you best. Know, okay. I'll try my best. If I have a car accident and someone is injured, what should I do? Who should I call? And what can I expect from the police? Uh, actually, if, it is, if the accident is not involved with the severe injury or death, both parties can solve the problems by themselves. Uh, you can call the, your insurance company if you have, and I suggest you should. Ha- everybody should have the insurance. The insurance will come and, uh, on the scene. and uh, So they will send out an agent? Yes, yes. And we will we'll check whether you are in fault or, or, or not. They, if the first, car, uh, first class insurance, they will take care of the damages, uh, expenses for you. Right. What about you don't need to call the police? You don't need to call the police, actually. But if someone got really injured or, or death, you have no choice. Uh, the police will have to in, be involved. Okay. That's answered that one quickly, hasn't it? <laughs> we'll keep on going with you, I think. Um, this is coming from John. I see a lot of cannabis shops around town. Uh, now, the law's just changed on this, I think, yes. on Friday. Yes. Uh, I'm thinking of going into this business. Is it really legal, is the question. I see people smoking joints, but I read that cannabis has been made legal for medical reasons and not recreational mm, reasons. Mm, mm. Nobody can get their head around the actual law regarding weed. Well, uh the reason law saying the reason law become more strict on act the actual flower of the right, cannabis the bud. right this this is the part that has been restricted a lot right uh, recently but for the the everything else if you are if you want to uh sell the seed or the the the, the plant itself you just need to go to the agriculture mini, uh, department the closest one i think in rayong you get the license and you can 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 do, start the business. But what business can you start? What's that license going to allow you to do? The license, this particular license that I'm to, I'm talking about, is to sell the, the seeds to grow to sell the plants. What about the people who sell the buds? Uh, the but the buds mean the flower. The flower, yeah. Yeah. flower yeah. You you cannot do unless it is only for the medical purpose, and you need to go for another kind of license on the Ministry of Health for the, that particular license which will be uh, prohibited and taken care of under, under the supervision of Ministry of Health. Okay, so what you're saying is that all these shops in Pattaya and all these little vendors and people who put tables out selling joints have got licences for medical reasons? If it is involved with the buds and flowers, yes, they must have the licence. But if uh, the parts, some other parts, the roots, the, the, leaf. the, the leaves or whatsoever, you, don't, you need to only uh, register yourself... Uh, at the Ministry of Health website, they call it uh, blue ganja, something like that in English. Okay. Yes. And then you can sell the leaf and you can yes. sell the stem and you can sell the root, whatever you want to sell, but you can't sell the bud. No, correct. That's correct. So who can sell the bud? Only under the supervision of the medical, uh, 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 the, the Ministry of Health. Right. You need to declare that's what kind of uh, purpose on that particular medical service that you are using. Right, so I can't get a like. Li- you're saying I can or I cannot get a license to sell cigarettes made up as marijuana with bud. No, you can't get a license for that. You cannot if you cannot define what kind of how it affects in medical uh, uh, use. Hmm. If if you can define. So how it, is everybody doing this? I don't think they have the the, the bud or the flower as the as the. Um, oh, so they're just using the leaves or something like that. If it is if it is the leaf, 
and some other parts, there's no problem. Because it's got to be under 0.2% THC yes, yeah. anyway, right. that, isn't it? Correct. Correct. That's an interesting one. Correct. Now, there's, the law's going to change next year anyway, isn't it? <laughs> That's what they're saying. Well, there will be many changes along the way. But as of now, until it is properly and officially announced, we still don't know for sure. We only can, can, can talk about what is actually uh, of, officially announced. Officially announced. Because we actually haven't seen any reports of anybody being arrested for selling cigarettes made up into joints on the street. Not yet, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. So you think that's something <laughs> that's that we're going to look forward coming. to? I think we have time one for one more. Uh, this is from Michael. My father uh, has passed away. And he has quite a large amount in the Thai banks, but he's been there with the will and death certificate and proved that he's the only beneficiary, being the only son in the will, but the banks won't give him the money until they see an order from the court. Why mm-hmm. won't the banks do that? What is this order from the court? Uh, you need to understand that the bank is also the private organisation that has to be responsible for the money, your, your money or anyone's money. If they release it too easily, they will be liable for this as well. And uh, in Thailand, the highest authorities that can give away the orders is the court. So the bank will need to have the court order for sure to in order to release the money, whether you have the last year and testament of the deceased or not. The last year and testament, it's, it's one of the items that will make the legal process easier right. when, you, when you go to the court and ask the court to become the executor to, to manage uh, the asset of the deceased. Okay. Because we have another question. This one's from Mickey. Uh, it says, good morning. Can I ask if you make your own will in Thailand? In other words, you get a piece of paper or you get something mm-hmm. on the internet. What do you need to make sure that it's valid? Uh, that's his question. He loves the show. But he says, what do I need to if I'm do- making my own will? Is it that easy? The last year in Testament, uh, I think, is the same uh, around the world. That is, if you at least you have two witnesses, it is valid already. Right. However... Uh, in Thailand, according to the civil law, you need to declare that when you do the will, someone needs to, or not only the witness, you need to declare that you are making the will un- not under any influence. Of my own free will and accord. Correct, yes. correct. And, and for example, at Magna Carta, we have the lawyer who certify uh, that when you make, at the time you make the will, you, dis- you do this at your own free will and you come to sign this on in front of the lawyer who certify the signature for you. Right. So this is 100% uh, uh, valid. Right, because I mean, I I'm, mean, I'm, I'm admit straight away, my will is with Magna Carta. And what I found was initially, it was Tony was helping me, uh, lots and lots of questions. I'm like, why do you need to know this? He said, I don't. But when you die, we do need to know this. So you mm-hmm. kind of cover all your bases. You get all the bank details and, and, and everything else. Correct. And What's also, the price it, of a, what is the price of a will? 5,000 baht on average. Which is not a great deal of money, no. is it? In, in, in the grand scheme of things, 100 quid. But also, if, if you're going to make, go back to his question, if you're going to make your own will, then it has to be two independent witnesses, and those witnesses cannot benefit from the will. Otherwise right. Otherwise, it's very important. It. Very right. important. And you've only got to have a couple of words wrong and it just becomes a mess mm. if you do it yeah. yourself. I mean, basically, with the banks, the reason why the banks want the court order is that the court will verify that the will is correct. They'll verify with the death certificate the guy has died. So basically, the court are confirming that everything is correct. Right. And that then takes a liability away from the bank because they're following the court order. How many cases do you get in a year of people who die intestate without wills? Oh, many, many. Oh, and... and, and it's not a, a I, I would not say uh, impossible, but it just make it more difficult if you do this without the, the last year and testament. Now, I'm going to guess something, and you can tell me if I'm right. Yep. I'll pay you 5,000 uh, baht, mm-hmm. and you do my will. Yep. I don't pay anybody 5,000 baht because I don't want to make a will for whatever reason. It's going to cost more than 5,000 baht to sort out the mess when I die, isn't it? Be a lot. Well, you're not cheap, let's face it. You're a lot of things, but you're not cheap. <laughs> it will be a lot, a lot more for sure. Right, so the it's a good aches, idea. The headaches, the, the, the time consuming, the effort. The thing is also, Tommy, if you die without a will, then there's different, uh, different levels that people can inherit on, and you have to prove that you're that level. So, for example, the grandparents could be 
an heir, but they might have died. So now you have to show their death certificates to the court that they no longer have the right to inherit from that will. So it's very complicated Mm -hmm. without a will. Yes, I think a will is the best way to go, isn't it? Plus Mm -hmm. you get to decide where your money goes, whatever you've got, whether it's two quid or two million quid. Correct. And it doesn't go to the wrong person. This is from David. I have a friend who wants to lend me some money. His wife owns a house and has said, I can register a mortgage on the house deed. Can you advise me what the maximum legal rate of interest is that I can charge Ah. as a foreigner? And can I register the debt on the title deed? Especially as it's a house on land, because I know the foreigner cannot own land in Thailand. Can he own the mortgage? Mortgage, yes, you can. And uh, there is no interest for foreigners. The interest for everybody, the maximum interest rate for the loan is 15% a year. 15 a year. A year. Maximum, which is 1.25% a month. Ah, okay. So the maximum you can charge is one point... Correct. ...is 15% a year. A year. And it has... It needs to be uh, uh, recorded in paper. So you need to have the... Actually, to have the loan contract. You have to have a contract. Correct. And the loan contract has to put the stamp duty as well to make it oh, legal. right. Okay. So, mm-hmm. And it's got to be quite a legal document as well. Yes, yes. This loan contract will go together uh, when you do the registration of the mortgage. And yes, when you do... So you have to register the mortgage and then when it's paid off, you have to deregister the mortgage. Correct. You have to uh, register, release the mortgage from the the, uh, uh, mortgager. Okay. And following on from that, Graham's emailed in, if I take a rental agreement with my girlfriend on a Mm -hmm. house I paid for Mm -hmm. and we both live in it, Will the rental agreement expire when she dies? If she dies first, will he lose his tenure? Can he get kicked out? According to the law, the lease will uh, terminate if the leasee pass away. Right. Not the other way around. If the lease... The leasee is the person who's renting it. Correct. So if the person who's... So if the person who is renting it out, who owns it and rents it out, mm-hmm. then As, then it will still continue. The right Because the rights, the, the ownership of the property will be inherit to the, his or her heir. Right. And his or her heir take all the rights and uh, duty according to the law, which means this become the leaser right. so later on. So if he rents this house, leases this house, and, but it's in his girlfriend or his wife's name, and she dies, he can still keep on renting it? Yes. The, the lease contract is still uh, valid. Do a lot of people do that? Register the lease? Yes. According to the law, if you rent the property uh, more than three years, you must register it at the land Ah. office. If it is under three years, you don't need to. So what is the longest time that you can lease a property for? As of now, I think they're considering changing it as well. But as of now, it is uh, 30 years. 30 30. Okay, well, most of us won't be here in 30 years' time, so it doesn't really affect <laughs> you us, wonder. does it? No. Barry's emailed in and he's asked me to ask you specifically about the uh, property loans that you offer. Um, now, first of all, if you'd like to know more details about the property loans, go to magnacarta.co.th. Uh, telephone number's there, ask to speak to Tony, and he can give you all the details. But just give us a rough idea. If somebody wants to borrow money against property, how does it work? Well, basically what we'll do is that we'll send a valuer to the property who, who will then check the property, make sure it's legal, give me a valuation. Uh, he'll give me a report. I can lend up to around about 50% loan to value. The loans can run six months to a year. They can be extended. We're not interested in taking your property. We do it exactly the same as the bank. We register a mortgage on the back of the title How deed. long does it take to go through? From start to finish, from when you come to see me first, probably two weeks, maybe two and a half weeks. So you can have the cash in your hand in two and a half weeks. Yes, the report takes about a week and then about a week to fix everything together. Right, because it's been pointed out to us that there is a, another mob, <laughs> a, a mob, should we say, that's advertising on Facebook and places like that. Now, it's just a website. It's not even got a landline. It's just on a mobile that's offer- that says they're offering a similar thing. Okay. I think the most important thing is credibility. Yeah, I think, uh, like I said, we're not after your property. We take the property as security. If you can't pay, then there's a process that happens, but you're still the owner of the property. So if you don't pay us, you're not going to lose 100% of your property, but there is a process which Pira can explain after me what happens if you can't pay. Yeah, but it's a, as, a, as a program, and I have to say, as we all know, I've taken advantage of it. As a program, it's a very fair program. Hmm. Um, you pay the interest uh, however it's arranged, uh, it's reasonable interest. It's a lot lower than the maximum that he was telling us about earlier on. Mm-hmm. Uh, this other company that's advertising is a website. 
and they don't even have a landline. They don't actually tell you who they are. There's no actual name of the company on there. So there's no credibility, whereas with you guys, there is. Yeah, but Tommy, also, if somebody comes and wants to do a loan, I ask them, okay, we can go through us, but if you have your lawyer, you can check the contract, you can send everything over to your lawyer, make sure everything everything is 100% good. So I have no problems for people doing that. Real, real quick, Kuhn Pira. Yep. We've talked about how easy it is to borrow money. Mm -hmm. How easy is it when people borrow money from us or owe us money but don't pay us. This is litigation. So somebody owes me money and they don't pay. Mm -hmm. What is the process in Thailand? If uh, the loan has been registered a mortgage against the security asset, as the lender, you need to submit the notice. You need to serve the notice to the borrower at least 60 days. Give them 60 days uh, to remedy the, 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 the debt. If, the, if it is past 60 days, you can go to the court, ask the court to enforce the mortgage. What about an unsecured loan? The unsecured loan, you can, according to the law, if you don't make the contract, you cannot file the lawsuit. But if I, let's say I have a contract with you for advertising uh-huh. and you don't pay me. We have a contract for six right, months and right. you don't pay me. Mm-hmm. Now we have a contract, you've committed, I promise to do this and uh-huh. you promise to pay me and you don't pay me. That's you, the, right. That's the normal liti- uh, civil litigation case. You breach the contract. You, the person who, for example, if you breach my contract, I can take you to the court. I need to take the uh, contract and go to the court with other evidence to provide and tell the court that how did you breach my contract. Okay. Um, but, you know, a lot of people believe it's more, it's more expensive to go to try and collect the money. The, law for, the legal fees are going to be more than the money that's owed in some cases. Mm-hmm. When you go to court here, say you owe me 60,000 baht right. and the legal fees are 40,000 baht, can I sue for the 100,000? You can first uh, sue for the capital amount, the compensation. If there is no nothing uh, stated in the contract, you can go up to only 5% right. a year okay. as the compensation. So for litigation, anybody needing to do any form of litigation, contact Magna Carta and ask for Kun Pira. Yes. Big Tony and Kuhn Pira, thank you so much for coming on Fabulous 103. Thank you very much for having me here. And we hope you'll come back again. I will. You can come back with a friend next time, not (laughs) with him. (laughs) Now you know where we are. Okay. And it's been really handy having you here. And we have videoed this, so we'll put this out on YouTube in the next couple of days uh, for anybody who wants to catch up on it as well. And if you want to get in touch with Magna Carta, visit their website magnacarta.co.th and there's telephone numbers there and you can ask to speak to Kuhn Pira as you hear he speaks fluent English or you can speak to Big Tony mm-hmm. just I want to speak to Big Tony and they know exactly where to put them through okay. so yes well, thank you so much for being thank with you. us this morning thank you. thank you for having us